we are increasingly aware of plant-derived substances that act as chemopreventive agents, substances that help prevent cancer, as opposed to chemotherapy substances aimed at treating cancer. These substances are not only inexpensive, easily, they're easily available, have no or limited toxicity. Now, since 1987, the National Cancer Institute has tested more than 1,000 different potential agents for chemopreventive activity, of which only a few dozen were moved to clinical trials. Curcumin, present in the Indian spice turmeric, which is used in curry powder, is one such agent that is currently under clinical investigation for cancer chemoprevention. According to their mode of action, chemopreventive agents are classified into different subgroups. There's the antiproliferatives, antioxidants, or carcinogen blockers. Curcumin belongs to all three, given its multiple mechanisms of action. Curcumin appears to play a role helping to block every stage of cancer transformation, proliferation, and invasion. It may even help before carcinogens even get to our cells. A study back in 87 investigated the effects of curcumin on the mutagenicity, the DNA mutating ability, of several toxins. And they found that curcumin was an effective anti-mutagen against several environmental and standard mutagenic and cancer-causing substances. But this was in vitro, uh, from the Latin meaning in glass, meaning in a test tube or petri dish. What about in people? Well, it's not like you can take a group of people and expose them to some nasty carcinogen just so you can give half of them turmeric and see what happens. Well, you could wait until some toxic waste spill happens or nuclear accident, but you know, otherwise you're not going to find people who would voluntarily expose themselves to carcinogens. Unless smokers. We can just test it on smokers. And they've got carcinogens coursing through their veins every day. If you take some smokers, have them pee on some bacteria, this is the number of DNA mutations that arise. Remember, all life is encoded by DNA, whether bacteria, banana, or bunny rabbit. It's easier, though, when measuring urinary mutagens to just pee on some bacteria. The urine of non-smokers caused far fewer DNA mutations. It makes sense. They have fewer toxins running through their system. And if you have the smokers eat turmeric for a month— oh, excuse me, have the non-smokers eat turmeric for a month, nothing really happens. All right. What if you do the same for smokers, though? 15 days later, they're down to here. 30 days, they're down to here. Right. And this is not some concentrated curcumin supplement. This is just plain turmeric, like you'd buy at the store, and less than a teaspoon a day, indicating that dietary turmeric is an effective anti-mutagen. You'll note, though, on this graph, there's an even more effective anti-mutagen, not smoking. Even eating turmeric for a month, the DNA-damaging power of smoker pee exceeded that of non-smokers. Turmeric was originally cultivated in the Old World tropics, but now thrives in other tropical regions around the world. Turmeric has large, dark green leaves that are erect and oblong. These leaves are pointed at the apex, broaden near the base, and envelop the succeeding shoot. Tuberic is an herbaceous perennial plant of the ginger family and has bright orange rhizomes, which grow beneath the foliage. During the dry season, the stems and leaves dry up and the rhizome remains dormant in the soil. Turmeric has a long history of being used for both food and medicine. It has been a major herb in Ayurvedic medicine for nearly 6,000 years. It has been used to purify the blood and to treat a number of illnesses, such as indigestion, liver and gallbladder diseases, arthritis, and rheumatism, as well as colds and flu. Raw turmeric applied to the skin is effective in treating inflammations, infections, bruises, and sprains. Since the discovery of turmeric's antioxidant phenolic compounds and the protection that these compounds provide against free radicals, this spice is now viewed as much more than just a food colorant or yellow dye. Turmeric's potential use in cancer prevention and the treatment of HIV infections is now the subject of intense laboratory and clinical research. Using turmeric in your food is a good way to prevent health problems. 
a small quantity of raw grated turmeric adds taste to salad dressings and gives them a bright orange color. Curry, which is made from turmeric and ginger, is another excellent seasoning that provides preventative health care maintenance. Turmeric tea is also beneficial for the restoration of the liver and the gallbladder and aids in reducing inflammation and swelling in arthritis. Turmeric is easy to grow in the home garden and will produce sufficient quantities of roots for salad dressings, homemade curries, and medicinal use. You can use fresh roots from the markets for planting or perhaps from your neighbors. Plant the roots superficially in the soil during April and May. Keep the area free of weeds during the following months and later in the dry season turmeric can be harvested for home use. The anti-cancer effects of the turmeric pigment curcumin extend well beyond its ability to block carcinogens. The anti-cancer effect of curcumin mainly results from the multitude of ways it regulates programmed cell death. It's estimated that the human body consists of 10 or so trillion cells. That's a million million. Almost all these cells get turned over within approximately 100 days. We're like a new person every three months. We reinvent ourselves physically. And since we're just made up of three things— air, water, and food— those are the only inputs. We are what we eat literally, physically. In a sense, our body has to rebuild itself every three months with the building materials we deliver to it through our stomach. Right? Our mouths are like the access road to the continual construction site to our body. Trucks roll in three times a day. What do we want them to deliver? Some shoddy cheap stuff we scrounged around for or bought at the discount outlets that's just going to fall apart? Or do we want to build our foundation solid? Right? We are each walking around inside the greatest known architectural structures in the universe. Let's not ruin such grand blueprints by consuming junk. Anyway, we only own the biological real estate we're born with, so if we need to rebuild every three months, we also need a wrecking crew. Right? If we're replacing 10 trillion every 100 days, that means we have to kill off like 100 billion cells every day, normally, out with the old and with the new. We do that primarily through a process called apoptosis, pre-programmed cell death from the Greek ptosis meaning falling, and apo meaning away from. So it's our cells falling away from our body. For example, we all used to have webbed fingers and toes, literally each one of us in the womb until about four months. Then apoptosis kicks in, and the cells in the webbing between, in between kill themselves off to separate our fingers. Some cells in our body overstay their welcome, though, like cancer cells. They don't die when they're supposed to by somehow turning off their suicide genes. What can we do about it? Well, one of the ways curry kills cancer cells is by reprogramming the self-destruct mechanism back into cancer cells. Let me just run through one of these pathways. Just so you can see the complexity. FAST is a so-called death receptor, which activates the FAST-associated death domain, along with death receptor 5 and death receptor 4. FAD then activates caspase 8, which ignites the death machine and kills the cell. Where does curry powder fit into all this? In cancer cells, curcumin, the pigment in the spiced turmeric that makes curry powder yellow, upregulates and activates death receptors, as has been demonstrated in human kidney cancer cells, as well as skin cancer and nose and throat cancer. It can also activate the death machine directly, as has been shown in lung cancer and colon cancer. Caspases are so-called executioner enzymes that, when activated, destroy the cancer cell from within by chopping up proteins left and right, kind of death by a thousand cuts. And that's just one pathway. Here's all the other ways curcumin can affect apoptosis, and here's the, all the different types of cancer cells curcumin can kill. Uh, but it tends to leave normal cells alone, for reasons that are not fully understood. Overall, this review showed that curcumin can kill a wide variety of tumor cell types through diverse mechanisms, and it's because curcumin can affect numerous mechanisms of cell death at the same time, 
It's possible that cancer cells may not easily develop resistance to curcumin-induced cell death, like they do to most chemotherapy. Furthermore, its ability to kill tumor cells and not normal cells makes curcumin an attractive candidate. For supper? Can't make money on some spice you can buy anywhere. An attractive candidate for drug development. The low incidence of large and small bowel cancer in India is often attributed to natural antioxidants such as curcumin in the diet, the yellow pigment in the spiced turmeric, which is used in curry powder. However, it's imperative to recall that beneficial effects attributed to diets are seldom reproduced by administration of a single ingredient in that diet. For example, you know, diets rich in beta-carotene lower the risk of tobacco-related cancers, but the administration of beta-carotene pills does not. That doesn't stop researchers from trying, though. Back in 2001, in a last-ditch attempt to save the lives of 15 patients with advanced colorectal cancer that didn't respond to any of the standard chemotherapy agents or radiation, they started them on a turmeric extract. It appeared to help stall the disease in a third of the patients, 5 out of 15, suggesting turmeric extract may cause clinical benefit in at least some patients with advanced refractory colorectal cancer. Now, if we were talking about some new kind of chemo, and it only helped one in three, you'd have to weigh that against chemo side effects— uh, losing your hair, sloughing of your gut, intractable vomiting, maybe being bedridden. So in a drug scenario, a one in three benefit may not sound particularly appealing, but when we're talking about a plant extract shown to be remarkably safe, even if it just helped 1 in 100, it'd be worth considering. With no serious downsides, a 1 in 3 benefit for end-stage cancer is pretty exciting. To see if colon cancer could be prevented, five years later researchers at the Cleveland Clinic and Hopkins tested two phytochemicals, uh, curcumin from, tur tur from turmeric, and quercetin found in red onions and red wine in people with familial adenomatous polyposis. Colon cancer forms from polyps, and there's this disease that runs in families in which you develop hundreds of polyps, which will eventually turn into cancer unless you have your colon prophylactically removed. So they took five such patients who already had their colons removed, but still either had their rectum or a little intestinal pouch, which were still packed with polyps. This is where they started out, between 5 and 45 polyps each. And this is where they ended up after six months of curcumin and quercetin supplements. On average, ended up with fewer than half the polyps, and the ones that they had shrunk in half. Here's a representative endoscopic photograph before and after. Kind of now you see it, now you don't. But what about patient one? Uh, got rid of all their polyps by month three, but then they seemed to come back. Uh, so they asked them, what's what? And it turned out the patient stopped taking the supplements. Darn it! So they put them back on the phytonutrient supplements for another three months, and the polyps came back down. All with virtually no adverse events and no blood test abnormalities. By studying people at high risk for colon cancer, they were able to show noticeable effects within just months. But polyposis is a rare disease. They were only able to recruit five people for the study. Thankfully, smokers are a dime a dozen. Another five years later, researchers put 44 smokers on turmeric curcumin supplements alone for a month and measured changes in their colorectal aberrant crypt foci which may act like precursors to polyps, which are the precursors to cancer. And we can see after just one month, there was a significant drop in the number of these aberrant crypt foci in the high-dose supplement group, but no change in the low-dose group, with no dose-limiting side effects, although the stools in the participants did turn yellow.